Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE chemistry lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 12.1 experimental design. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll learn absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. Please note I'm only posting half the topics in the syllabus here on YouTube. The entire syllabus is available on my Patreon, link below. Also, the slides I use in my videos will soon be available to download, so if you're interested, look out for a link in the description to those as well. You need to name appropriate apparatus for the measurement of physical quantities, including time, temperature, mass, and volume. So time is measured using a stopwatch or stop clock, which are generally accurate to two decimal places. In a scientific context, the primary unit of time is the second, although minutes, hours, days, or even longer units of time may be used instead, depending on the duration of the experiment. Temperature is measured using a thermometer or digital temperature probe. The units of temperature are degrees Celsius. Traditional thermometers are generally accurate to the nearest degree, while precise thermometers give readings to the nearest 0.1 degree. Mass is measured using a balance, which generally gives readings to two decimal places. The standard unit of mass is the kilogram, although in chemistry, grams are more often used. The volume of a liquid can be measured using a burette, a volumetric pipette, or a measuring cylinder, depending on the level of accuracy required. All three generally give readings to the nearest 0.1 cubic centimetre, but measuring cylinders are much less precise than the other two. Volumetric pipettes measure and deliver fixed volumes of liquid, while burettes are used to dispense variable volumes in titration experiments. See topic 12.2 for more details. The volume of a gas can be measured using a gas syringe or by downward displacement of water using a measuring cylinder. Both are generally accurate to 0.1 cubic centimeter, but gas syringes give much more precise readings. Evaluating the strengths and limitations of a piece of apparatus is an important part of planning a successful experiment. Some of the advantages and disadvantages of laboratory apparatus are displayed in the table. Now, in your exam, you may also be required to evaluate an experimental method. Note that we already covered this in some detail in topic 6.2, which I'll put a link to in the description below. Now, whilst your knowledge of practical techniques in chemistry should help you to spot weaknesses in the design and suggest improvements, you might also benefit from considering whether the apparatus chosen is suitable for the quantity being measured and the level of accuracy required, whether or not repeat experiments were carried out, which help us to improve reliability and identify potential errors, and whether appropriate control measures were put in place in order to limit the effect of extraneous variables like temperature or pH. Finally, you need to know several key terms used when describing solutions. So a solvent is a liquid in which a solute dissolves, a solute is a substance that dissolves in a solvent to form a solution, and a solution is a mixture of one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent. For example, salt is a solute, water is a solvent, and salt water is a solution. A saturated solution is a solution that's dissolved as much solute as it's capable of dissolving at a given temperature. If more solute is added to a saturated solution, it will remain undissolved at the bottom of the container, as the solvent can accept no more. Finally, filtrate is a liquid or solution that has passed through a filter, and residue is a substance that remains after filtration, evaporation, distillation, or any similar process. For example, if we were to filter a mixture of sand and water, the filtered water would be the filtrate, and the sand would be the residue. For more on separation methods, see topic 12.4, coming soon. Well done, you just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 12.1, experimental design. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time for topic 12.2, acid-base titrations.